So I hope that my English is better understandable than in my Italian yesterday. <laughs> I will try <coughs> um, to introduce our today's uh, cost workshop. Um, just recalling uh, um, the first point of our memorandum of understanding. Uh, uh, Agostino already mentioned it. Um, with the three steps uh, that we <coughs> put at the beginning of our text, uh, map the current situation, highlight best practices, and identify or create mechanisms for integration. Um, this workshop should be the first step of uh, this reflection, common reflection, and we try, we plan to try um, we plan it, trying to further a discussion about the state of the art, about the, in order to identify the needs of our scientific community, which are involved in the study of manuscripts, and to think about possible concrete solutions to common problems. That's what we need now. Mm -hmm. uh, possibly not in a, in a future, but uh, in a quick, uh, in, in a quick lap of time. Well, this starting point is uh, the awareness that the web offers plenty of resources for the study and research about medieval manuscripts, responding to different scientific needs, digital collections of manuscripts, library catalogues, repertoires of texts, bibliographic databases, as well as tools for particular types of analysis. All these kind of tools are increasingly available on the net, <coughs> and they are characterized by a variable level of adherence to standards, both, I should say, technological and scientific, as they were created during a long and often uncoordinated process of flaring in which different actors interacted, having different points of view and different target audiences. Librarians, codicologists, philologists, art historians, etc. With this plural background, the possibility of overcoming the current state of data fragmentation and lack of interoperability as far as the research of renewable manuscript is concerned, should be the main focus of the workshop. That's why we planned three section, sessions after presenting yesterday the, our Italian network project. Three sessions that are expected to deal with complementary approaches, the manuscript as cultural object, focused on databases of library catalogues and material descriptions from a codicological and, and paleographical point of view. The manuscript as a witness regarding his content focused on databases about text transmission and repertoire of texts in manuscripts. That is a philological point of view, I should say. The manuscript as heritage focused on digitization programs and collection and digital libraries of manuscripts. I should say a conservation point of view. And the fourth session has been specifically organized to address the interaction problem in order to foster the interoperability of existing systems and resources. Or the first point that, that I'd like to stress in my introduction, is strictly connected with the organization of the four sessions. But is the simple fact, well known by any of us, that medieval manuscripts are complex entities. They require a variety of skills and a high degree of specialization in order to describe their external characteristics and to analyze their content. We need to preserve at all costs the, this complexity. And it should be the primary object of research. Whatever the models, new technologies, pushes us to 
towards may be, we have the responsibility to ensure that manuscripts keep being considered and studied in their ontological complexity. The plural perspective involved in the study of medieval manuscripts is of course among the reasons why information technology has offered to our discipline great advantages, both in terms of quality and in terms of quantity. But it is also important to underline the growing risks that these advantages entail. New technologies tend to impose new limits and new simplification that are often much more dangerous than we explicitly <coughs> recognize. The first and more visible advantage is the availability of digital images of manuscripts <coughs> on the internet. The virtualization of an object does not go without its advantages and uh, it increases the validity of the counsel often given by paleographers and philologists that we continue to take into account the importance of the direct consultation of manuscripts. But a less vis visible problem perhaps in digitalization seems stems directly from one of its most seductive aspects. That is to say, its enormous potential in facilitating access and information. An image can speak to an audience that expands far beyond specialists alone, and this potentiality of widespread dissemination has become one major argument in application for national and European community funding. Hand in hand with this funding, comes the requirement to standardize processes and results and render them objectively appreciable through what is referred to as the outputs of a given projects. It seems to me that the mission to preserve our cultural heritage, so characteristic of European cultural identity in our globalized world, and the increasing potentialities of media that are presently placed at the core of cultural politics, ensure that digitalization will continue to grow and will enjoy a radiant future. This scenario inevitably involves bro broadening the horizons of our expectations. We constantly expect more to the point of practically demanding the images of a certain manuscript be made available to us on the, on the internet. The consequences are all too easy, even if unintentional, that which we cannot access via the web, that which we cannot pull up on our computer screens in a matter of seconds, runs the risk of simply disappearing, of being marginalized and neglected by future scholarship. We are facing, therefore, an issue of cultural politics to which we should be far from indifferent. Who decide the priorities of digitalization? Will they respond only to local priorities, library by library? Or will they also respond to scientific needs, which almost always run perpendicular to the needs of institutions dedicated to conservation? For example, digitalization organized by author, by period, by place, by scribe. This problem is not a secondary one for a stance that does not simply commit itself to the demands of library conservation. There is already a number of projects that go beyond the need of libraries uh, on important texts. Uh, I have in mind the Roman de la Rose project. There are many Comedia, Dante's Comedia projects, and, uh, and also for important author, uh, Ramon Yui is one of them. Uh, but generally, uh, they experience much greater financial difficulty. <coughs> there, is also, there is also another problematic aspect in the success of digital manuscript images. We run the risk of confusing the object of our study, the manuscript, 
and its availability in digital form with the ultimate goals of our research. Taken to the extreme, a medieval text only exists if you can have the image of, of one of its manuscript witnesses on the screen, not if you can read it and understand its meaning. Once consideration is focused only on the virtual reality of the object, it is easy to consider scientific work on that object as an appendix to the image, secondary in respect to the image's visibility and useful, and useful primarily in relation to the image itself. Scientific results are no longer data stemming from the search, they are emblematically called metadata that identify with an image. This simplification of descriptive data then compromises in all fields the complexity which I was referring to at the beginning. <clears throat> Moreover, it touches one aspect in particular that to me seems fundamental. In fact, it inevitably exacerbates a problem already present in our disciplinary divisions, limiting data pertinent to the study of manuscript to description of its materiality. We speak about material philology. As for the contents, the information available is generally limited to shorter identification, perhaps through catalogues of incipits and explicits. I believe, however, that in dealing with medieval manuscripts, it is essential that we promote another level of reading. We must also address the transmission of texts, their textual and philological value, and their linguistic stratigraphy, in other words, their place in the textual tradition. Only in this way we can manage to retrace the true cultural identity of the manuscript, its relationship with its models, and the degree of its relevance to the life and culture of its era. Creating a system of, of web-based interactive consultation for this kind of data would be an important challenge to the prevailing model for the analysis of medieval, of medieval manuscripts on the web. My second point concerns the search of data and information about manuscript <coughs> through the web. The need of every one of us, of every scholar, is to find information allowing quick, authoritative and complete results. The Google way of life is going to accustom the all of us with such a sort of blind expectation. But one of the greatest advantages to the web, uh, the web offers, the virtual accessibility of all data available online, should be appreciated using methods that are closer to our scientific needs than to the algorithms of Google. <clears throat> the quantity and the heterogeneity of the data we have at our disposal is in fact a major determining factor, even when we are simply dealing with the description of a manuscript and not by definition focused on the mere object, but that, that is made all the more effective by considering and comparing other descriptions. This is the case with all data that require interpretation, such as when we have, when, uh, uh, such as when and where a manuscript is, was copied, for example. The possibility of searching a network of databases online is challenging the conditions of our research on manuscripts. And it is thus also changing our expectations. It is modifying our perception of what we should require from a description. Establishing dating or provenance of a manuscript, identifying a scribe, can become and should, and should become much easier, but also much more rigorous operation if we have the descriptions of all the other manuscripts dating to the the same period, localized to the same geographic area, or attributed to the same scribe, at our disposal via the web. 
There are, of course, already several portals for cross-searching of databases dedicated to medieval manuscripts. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you know them, I have here <coughs> uh, some of them, some, perhaps the most known, the most rich, uh, Manuscripta Medievalia uh, for German libraries, Manus Online for Italian libraries, Manuscriptorium, mostly for Eastern Europe, the CEL, Consortium of European Research Libraries, the Digital Scriptorium, based in the United States, the Catalog of Digitizing Medieval Manuscripts in UCLA, etc. etc. But for the most part, we are talking about networks established by libraries naturally on macro-regional or national scale. It is perhaps the same logic that I alluded to earlier in relation to the digitalization, a logic centered on conservation and conservation-based institutions. Given this situation, the experiment that we presented yesterday evening <coughs> tries to support the needs and interests of the search in addition to those of conservation. The witnesses of a given text, the products of a scriptorium, the manuscript written in a certain graphic typology or in a linguistic area, usually are not groups of manuscripts kept within a single library or within a single country. The study of medieval manuscripts is by definition transversal and therefore, the instruments that guide our research should be transversal as well. Um, let me show only a couple of examples of what I mean uh, taking our trame uh, prototype. Uh, yesterday it was already uh, shown. But, um, <coughs> so you, you, you know perhaps already uh, who were yesterday were here, it is um, a sort of uh, search engine, a meta search engine that access, uh, that gives access to uh, an, an Italian network of databases, uh, Mirabile, uh, first line, and uh, Manuscritti Datati d'Italia and Codex and uh, Cleon. We spoke about that yesterday afternoon. But we tried to, um, <coughs> to uh, enlarge its possibilities also to some other uh, libraries or archives or Portals. Uh, I think we have here only the UCLA uh, uh, among uh, the portals I I quoted uh, before. So our uh, uh, um, idea is to um, to try uh, <coughs> something very concrete, very simple, um, to have uh, answers from. Uh, 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 number of databases. I, I shall show you only one example that is of course uh, one of the first examples I tried to <coughs> to question uh, our Trame <coughs> portal. Um, I, I have to confess that uh, one of my first tries was about uh, Guittone d'Arezzo. Mm, is uh, an unknown uh, almost unknown medieval Italian poet, tamed by Dante, so uh, nobody more <coughs> knows him. Uh, I am one of the very few people um, who deal with this guy. And to my surprise, Trame, the Trame system found for me a manuscript previous, previously unknown. If we, I try to repeat this search for you. <coughs> uh, 
for the ones who were not here yesterday, Trame uh, search all these databases and gives the results uh, only of uh, the chef mark of the manuscripts that you find and then you have to go directly to the site. So we have here the few manuscripts uh, that have uh, known works by Guttone in Mirabile. We have the, the Leo database about uh, lyric, Italian lyric poetry where uh, yesterday we saw all the description and very analytical, very uh, text by text, but here in, in Luca we find through Codex a, a manuscript that has a, a canzone attributed to Guittone, we have, I think we have also the image there by chance, Probably it's not a text uh, that Guitone wrote, really, but it's an important attestation of its uh, uh, Fort Leben in the 15th century. So, in a very narrow, still a very uh, short list of databases, we can find something that it would be very difficult to find in another way. And, uh, I will only show you another try um, because we as Agostino already said we had in the last uh, <coughs> months and week uh, the uh, possibility to um, study with the Institut de Recherche et d'Histoire de Text uh, uh, some kinds of uh, possible inter interactions so if we try um, one of the <laughs> Uh, uh, a site, a, a library in France, we should have the results also from takes um, its time. Here we are. We have, of course, the Mirabile, <coughs> but something on. on should go through. Here we have the UCLA <coughs> manuscript catalog. The London, of course, this is not the, these are <coughs> Valenciennes as the prominence of some <coughs> authors, but we have also the major database of the Yerashte, the medium which uh, <coughs> gives us access to the <coughs> huge um, base de données uh, of uh, the reproduction of manuscripts. Mm -hmm. Also here the, the Dictionnaire Technologique de l'Ancien Français, um, who has a bibliography so that we, we can find, uh, for example, here is the very old Saint, uh, Séquence de saint Eulalie. But I don't see the, yeah, let's see. And you have access to the materials of this side or I was quite oh, sorry Perhaps. I lost my time yeah. I had no, no more details Oh, it's very strange because I, I found through the through the UCLA database that the bibliotheque also oh, I find through the UCLA database that uh, the bibliotheque de Valencia. <laughs> Okay. 
in the UC, through the UCLA data, the, the portal, we find that the Bibliothèque de Valenciennes has the digitization, has digitized the microfilms. I, I guess. Let us see if I do. You see, this is the UC inside, you see Valenciennes, and you have a link to the library. I think you find here <coughs> again the Institut de Recherche et Stratégie. So it's a circle that can very easily uh, be closed. But uh, what I would like to stress, I, I don't lose your time with uh, others' uh, tries uh, there. What I would like to stress is that. <coughs> is that our major problem in comparison with other projects uh, in the world of library science uh, is the fragmentary nature of the data and of the software used by the different databases, as well as the lack or the weakness of authoritative processes of standardization. To a certain extent, this situation is inevitable. It is the outcome of hundreds of archival projects born independently of one another and shaped by an adherence to the pseudo-ownership of their authors. But it is also the result of scientific factors that, we, that are worthy of preserving and defending in order to guarantee the necessary adaptability of single databases to the needs of the different objects of study and the different tradition, textual, linguistic, material, to which they are dedicated. So what do we need? <coughs> Sorry, go back to my... This is time. Okay, so what do we need in order to preserve this peculiarity of the study of medieval manuscripts in the web? First of all, it would be appropriate to aim towards standard forms. Much progress is being made in this respect, particularly for library catalog system, but at the moment, cross-research through databases of different nature cannot help us but to use an uninvasive model in order to obtain results even from systems that are historically and irrepressibly autonomous from standards. Anyway, at a lower level, we should try and establish authority lists to be proposed especially to, the, to new database projects. Uh, about this point, a common work is, uh, was recently planned by Sismel and IRHT. We'll speak about that <clears throat> tomorrow. And at the higher level, we will have to face the revolution of the so-called semantic web. We have the working group four of the cost action, which is going to focus its attention particularly on this perspective. But in the meantime, I wonder if, if we could not conceive a meta search system with a simplified interface, limited to certain information related to manuscript, shelf mark, dating, localization and to the text they contain, also title, incipit, language. Searches based on these parameters should obtain responses from a growing number of archives presented on the web through a network of partnership that should include both libraries and research institutions, gathering information from databases specific to single areas, authors or manuscript catalogs and pro portals that already collect transversal information, such as those sites to both. So our trauma prototypes is of course at the disposal of the cost action network in this perspective. We can, uh, hoping, we, I hope that we will have also other possibilities, other chances. Because, because this is part, a, a crucial part of the agenda for which I hope we'll progress to in finding answers. Also, 
But I hope that this workshop will be successful if we'll be able to agree at least on our questions. Because we, if we succeed, and only if we succeed in this issue, we could try and give a chance to our research field for the future. The absence of any mentioning of the humanities if in Horizon 2020 European Strategic Research Programme is a challenge that we should be able to win now.